you can type on the chat or when we take the break also you can tell me or you can ask me questions if needed right any questions shall we start mm -hmm. okay no questions great all right so let's start with section 2.1 a previous of calculus okay previous of calculus calculus was developed to solve the following problems the tangent problem and the area problem this was the motivation behind the development of calculus the first problem the tangent problem is the one that we will take care of in calculus one in calculus two they will take care of the area problem okay so i'm going to give you a lot of details now about the tangent problem but then briefly i will explain to you these two okay let's start with the tangent problem the tangent problem basically deals with this how to find the slope of a line tangent tangent this is an important word tangent to a curve to a curve at a given point at a given point right and as an example as an introduction i'm gonna take this example one that deals with a function that i hope all of you guys are very familiar with which is the quadratic function f of x equal x squared okay uh, this quadratic function when graph shows a parabola parabola uh, and suppose you want to find the slope of the tangent line at this point on your parabola one comma one look when you graph your parabola you're gonna get this u shape right opening upward right you have seen this in precalculus very well right but in case you don't remember as a way to uh, refresh our knowledge let me pull out our Desmos scientific calculator uh, the graphing calculator right that I talked to you about we are going to have this uh, tool this basic graphing calculator and in this calculator graphing calculator if you type y equal x squared there you see the parabola right now in case you don't have this uh, access to this graphing calculator it is in our website it is in blackboard but if you want just the link right now for you to do some graphing while i explain things uh, here it is here it is uh, welcome viridiana we just started with um, the first lecture here is the desmos uh, graphing calculator okay so use this to confirm your knowledge use this to whenever you are not sure about the shape of a graph again it's a very basic graphing calculator doesn't give you everything but give you a base a base uh, like an idea right yeah so this is the parabola and i'm paying attention to this part to this part because uh, i'm i have been asked to figure out the tangent line at this point one comma one why one comma one professor well because one is square one is square one times one is one right yeah that's it that's the idea it's a one here okay great now we graph it here in our calculator i send you the link right uh, okay so now if, if they ask you to draw a tangent line at this point right at this point in green let's use green here one comma one right not hard to do it right somehow as human beings we come with a mind that can easily draw a tiny line right like this right you know how to do it somehow right you just have to share one point locally with the curve and then you get it, right tiny line so that is not a problem but and the issue is right the issue is this it's easy to do it like this right tiny line you want a tiny line professor here it is the tiny line there we go tiny line right yeah i did it sort of using my mind right just sharing one point with a curve locally here i drew a line 
But now mathematicians ask themselves, is it possible to come up with an algorithm, with a method, with a step-by-step -step recipe such that a computer can do what they just did here, right? Computers, they don't have eyes. They don't have this sense of uh, locally sharing one point, right? How, how can I implement an algorithm to do that? So over years and years, they figure the following out. Said, okay, let's start with something that we are all familiar with, which is the slope of secant lines first, of secant lines, right? And then gradually, we're gonna go somehow from the slope of this secant line to the slope of this tangent line. This thing, right? So the idea is this: you start, you start with a point that is not this point, which we're gonna call uh, the base point. This one, this is our base point, right? This point is where you're gonna draw the tiny line. And try to remember this, guys, for your homework one. A couple of questions there. I'm gonna ask you to figure out the slope of the tiny line following this method that I'm going to explain now. Okay, so mathematicians say, right? Let's start with something that we are familiar with, which are secant lines and a slope of secant lines. So they suggested, they suggested, okay, this is your base point. Take a point, call it the point Q, Q here, one, and draw a secant line, draw a secant line this way, secant line here. Mm -hmm. So a second line there, and this should be your starting point, your starting point, this second line. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right, there we go. This looks good. Yeah, second line, right? Second line, second line. And since we're gonna do this several times, let's call it second one line. Uh, second line one. Now, there is a way to compute the slope of this second line, right? The slope of a second line. How can we compute that, Professor? Well, it's just a matter of figuring out the coordinate here. Let's say this coordinate is, in this case, 1.5, let's say, right? You can take really any, any point here as long as it's not your base point, right? In the neighborhood of P, in the neighborhood of P. In this case, I'm choosing points on the right neighborhood of this basic point P, but this can be done also in the left side, choosing points on the left, right? Yeah, 1.5. 1.5, when a square gives you this value, 2.25. Right now, Professor, how do you know? Well, I I work with numbers, right, guys? I'm a mathematician, so I, I have these things in my head. But in case you don't, did you use this other tool that we're going to use is called the Desmos Scientific Calculator. It's in our website. If you want to just grab the link here and put it in the chat. There you go. All right? But it's in our website. It's in black. Yeah, 2.25, right? Yeah, so uh, the input value, the output value. Now, if I have the input value, the output value of the base point, the input value, the output value of this Q1 point, I can compute the slope of secant line one, right? Secant line one. How? Well, I take the difference, the difference of these two guys, the output values, right? 2.25 minus one, top, right? Remember the rise and then over the run, the difference of the input value 1.5 minus one, right? Let's write this guy, which is our base point or better said the coins or base point in green. So you can remember this when you do your homework. 2.25 minus one is gonna be just 1.25, right? And 1.5 minus one, 0 0.5, right? Now time to do this division. So use your scientific calculator of your choice or the Desmo scientific calculator that I strongly recommend is free, so your material. The quotient is 2.5, 2.5, yeah, 2.5. Mm -hmm. 
So I successfully got the, the slope of this secant line, right? The one associated to P base point and Q1, secant line one. But now the idea is to do this again, but this time now with a point that is closer to P, the idea is to go towards P to the point P. So I will choose this red point. Okay, so let's draw a second secant line. Let's say it's this, okay? Great, so this, let's call it secant line two. Mm -hmm. And let's call this point Q2, Q2, right? Second point. Now, let's say this guy is 1.1. These guys could be any arbitrary point, but what is important is to get closer to P. Let's say this is 1.1. 1.1 is squared, because remember we're working with the square function, right? The square is 1.21. Professor, again, 1.1 squared, 1.21. How do you know? Well, guys, you don't have to know these things, right? Uh, but if needed, use your calculator, right? I'm familiar with these numbers, right? It's 1.21. Very good. Like 11 squared, right? Yeah, so use your calculator, get the point. And now again, right? What is important is that this output value will allow us to compute the slope of this secant line two this way. Difference of output values, but sometimes it's called the rise over difference of input values, right? Which Often it's called the uh, run. And allow me to write this base point again in green. So you will notice that the base point always goes here, but these guys, they change. Okay, so this difference is clearly, is clearly equal to 0 0.21 now divided by 0 0.1 now, right? But what is this division? Okay, let's do it in our calculator. Scientific calculator of your choice or Desmos scientific calculator. 2.1 now, right? 2.1, 2.1 now. Okay, guys. Now, first question. First question that I'm gonna ask you is this. We are trying to catch the slope of this tangent line, right? Allow me to write this tangent line in green. So tangent line, right? We're trying to see if following an algorithm, we can end up figuring out the slope of this tangent line, right? Tangent line. And I'm gonna ask you guys, where do you think the sequence of numbers is going? Anybody could write in the chat? 2.5, 2.1. Where do you think this is coming down? Just take an educated guess and tell me, right? More or less, more or less, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Uh huh. What I see the students writing. So, Sarah, you made my day. Excellent. Excellent. Oscar also, Adriana, right? Yeah, it's not like it's obvious, right? But kind of look. If this is coming down to something, right? And look at the slope here, bigger, less, less. This is going to two, right? And if you take another point, let's say uh, 1.01, .01, and you do what I just did here, right? You compute the slope, I, I bet you, you're gonna get something like 2.001, something like that, right? But what is important to notice is that these guys that are coming down to two, two, two is the slope of this tangent line, right? That's the idea. So mathematicians at that moment, uh, they kind of celebrated this because they, okay, there is a way for a computer to be programmed, right? To, co to, to figure out the slope of this tangent line. Right? So conclusion here, is this, the limit, and this is the first time I'm, I'm using this word limit, the limit, the limit, right? Important word for us in calculus, the limit of the slopes of this sequence of numbers, right? This is slopes of secant line, right? The slope of 
the second lines as Q, as Q approaches, approaches P, right? So this is a sequence of Qs, right? Approaching P, that's important too. Approach P is the slope of the tangent. Is the slope of the tangent. Yeah, so this is, this is how you should kind of introduce yourself the idea of a limit, right? It's a sequence of real numbers that are approaching some other real number, right? I did it this from above, from the right, right? But it's possible to do it also from the left. Indeed, in the homework, you will see that they will ask you to do it from the left. And you will see that kind of, you will get to sandwich some real number there in, in between. And that is supposed to be the limit, right? The limit, so it's sort of informally, right? Informally speaking. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, this is just the introduction, right? Uh, I will go over one whole problem to explain to you how you have to do this in detail, right? But this is the main idea, right? A sequence of values approaching some other value, right? which is gonna be called the limit, the limit. Uh, and you may say, Professor, can you give us a real world example of um, a limit in real, in, the, in real life, right? Well, I could, for example, give you uh, this example in physics. Uh, you know that uh, Albert Einstein determined that in the universe, nothing moves faster than light, right? Nothing moves faster than light. So basically, the speed of light it acts like a limit for all possible speeds in the universe, right? So if you want to kind of think of that, if that helps, right? Nothing moves faster than the speed of light, right? Yeah, it's kind of a limit for all possible speeds. Yeah, but then later we will go over this in details. All right, now that was the tangent problem, right? The tangent problem. And then we're gonna dig into this problem in details. We will call this tan the slope of this tangent like the derivative later and a lot of things that we will do, right? We will work through this in calculus one. In calculus two, you're gonna talk about the area problem. So right now, I'm gonna give you just an introduction of that area problem, right? Then when you take calculus two, they will work over that in details. But what is the area problem? Well, for you to know, the second problem that um, motivated mathematicians for the development of calculus was to figure out how to calculate the area under a curve over an interval, over an interval. Um, for you to kind of understand this, I'm going to give you this example, example two. I'm gonna work now with a cubic function that should, you should be really familiar with, g of x equals x cubed. This is the cubic function whose graph is shown below. Suppose you want to find the area under the curve over the interval one comma two. All right, first, let me show you the shape of this graph, right? Remember, in pre-calculus, I show you that this function when graphed shows the following. It shows this, it looks like a chair, chair where you sit, right? It's smooth, like this, right? This is the graph of this guy, right? A chair from left to right increasing, right? Yeah, in case, you don't remember from pre-calculus, no problem, guys. Use your tools. I gave you this um, Desmos graphing calculator. Bring it up. I already shared the link, but in case you just join, this is the link. It's in our website in Blackboard too, but in case you just want the link right now to follow, this is the link. All right, y equal x cubed. What is the graph of this? equal x cubed. Aha, uh -huh, the chair appears there. I call it a chair because it looks like a chair where you sit when you're tired, right? Increasing from left to right, look like this, right? I kind of exaggerated here. So I can show you the area below the curve over this interval one comma two. All right, so the interval is here, one comma two, well, let's say one is here and two, um, let's say it's here, 
Let's create some space because otherwise you're not gonna be able to see it. Let's say one is here, two is there, right? Okay. You draw perpendicular. They want to figure out this area. This was a problem. This is not a triangle, it's not a trapezoid, it's not a rectangle whose areas are taken care of in Euclidean geometry, right? It's a, it's, it's a shape that has a curve up here, right? So mathematicians for a long time, this uh, figure this out, right? So, and the way they figure this out, again, uses this idea of going from something that we know very well to something that kind of we don't know, right? What do we know? We know how to compute area of rectangles, right? Rectangles. So they started with that. They said, okay, let's subdivide, let's subdivide this region into two regions by taking the middle point here between one and two and throwing this perpendicular here, perpendicular, there, there we go. Then mathematicians said, okay, here, so this parallel to the x-axis, parallel to the x-axis, I get these two rectangles, right? Two rectangles. Now, mathematician said, this area one, the sum of the areas of these two rectangles is close to the area below this curve, right? Except for these two triangles, like let's call them, right? But then is it, what if we continue doing this again? Midpoint, draw a perpendicular, another rectangle here, another rectangle here. Midpoint, draw a perpendicular, another rectangle here, another rectangle. More rectangles, four rectangles now, right? But what have we gained, Professor? What have we gained? Well, we have gained accuracy because notice now I am closer to the actual area, right? Look, area two, right? And turns out if you continue doing this process, right? So this area one, then area two, one, area two, area three, three just like you saw before with the slopes right these are going to the actual area actual area so they approach actual actual area below the curve area below the curve right which is this in yellow Right, so that's the idea, right? The sequence of real numbers approaching another real number, which in this case is gonna be the area. So mathematicians said as a conclusion that again, the limit, the limit, right? You hear the word again, the limit of the sums of the areas, these rectangular areas, right? Well, the rectangles as the base of the rectangles approaches zero, right? As the base gets smaller and smaller, is the area, the actual area under the curve over the interval from one to two, right? From one to two, this area in yellow here in yellow, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and this sequence of rectangles, they are called uh, Riemann sums, these guys, right? Riemann sums, in honor to the German mathematician Ber Bernard Riemann, right? Who was the one who figured this out, basically. Riemann sum, right? The sequence of areas, right? Going to some real number now, okay? Yeah, and then this is again, a very, very brief introduction, guys. You will get to do this in calculus too, in detail, right? But for you to know, right? The idea of limit appears again there, right? 